So let's continue the story. We got my phone rang and I interrupted. So back to this thing here, we're trying to determine how many Bell's electrons are in this element. And since six is the biggest number of shells, so it means the last shell, I mean, this, this element number with, with 60 electrons has two beta electrons available for reactions. So on the exam, I'm gonna ask you to, to define for me the number of beta electrons that, that you know, a particular element may have. And you have to be able to create this chart and this kind of, kind of distribution and then get me down to, 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 to my answer, all right? So, that, so that's how you distribute electrons in a certain order in shells around the nucleus. So again, the beta electrons are the ones that get involved in reactions and they try to go based on what's called the, the octet rule. So the octet rule states that an element will try to get involved in reactions in order to get its valence shell count to either two or eight, okay? So it wants two valence electrons if it's in the first shell. So only the first shell can do this. All other shells want eight electrons. Want to have eight electrons, and if they have eight, then they're stable. In fact, elements that naturally have eight electrons are called inert elements. So, your inert elements have eight electrons already in the valence shell, and these do not particip participate in, in, in reaction. So, they are non reactive it's impos almost impossible to get them to combine with something else because they are already they already have a, have a complete valence shell okay now let's, well, let's keep going since we got interrupted there so we we'll next look at the idea of isotopes So isotopes are elements with the same, let's give you off camera for a second here, same number of protons, but different number of electrons. So isotopes have the same basic atomic number, but different atomic mass. And by the way, the atomic number of any of any element is equal to the number of protons, okay? The atomic mass is equal to the number of protons plus number of neutrons. And so isotopes have different numbers of, of neutrons, basically, okay? You also have, sometimes, atoms can gain or lose electrons in an effort to get this octet situation, okay? So atoms can lose or gain electrons in a process called ionization. And if, for example, let's say sodium loses an electron, it will, loop, it will then get a charge of sodium plus one because it has, now, since it lost one electron, it has one, ex, one extra proton compared to electrons, so it's a plus one charge. So anything that's charged is now called, but so once things become charged, they're called ions. So ions means that there's a charge on it, okay? And if it's charged positively, that's called a cation. Cations have a positive charge, while anions, okay, chlorine becomes chloride ion. This 
anions have a negative charge. That's how we distinguish different kinds of ions. And ions are atoms that have a charge, and, atom, and atoms, atoms become ions when they become ionized, meaning they either gain or lose an electron in an effort to satisfy their octet requirement. Okay. All right, we'll pause there.